Hello watchers and welcome to the second episode of Ink With Me. Um, in this episode it's going to be fairly simple. Um, it's just going to be a case of getting used to using the pen and some line exercises. But I'm going to show you how you go from drawing a line to this. So let's jump straight in. Um, if you want to join in with me, all you need is a sketchbook, just a cheap one, nothing special, but as long as the paper is fairly smooth, or just some regular printer paper, or if you fancy and you've got lots of spare bristle board, then by all means use that. A traditional dip pen. This one is from Speedball. Um, and I've forgotten what the nib is, but I'll put it on screen of what it is. And I'm using the Liquitex acrylic inks in carbon black. Um, and I've got like a... I'm, I'm not using it as a triangle, I'm using it as a ruler, but it needs to have a lip along the edge, if you can see that. Oh, I'm just trying to get my side cameras to focus so you can see that it has a lip um, because it's important to not let the ink slip underneath and I'll show you why later. Um, so it's in a bit of water basically to clean your dip pen off and a bit of tissue paper just in case of any accidents. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck in and do the first exercise. So, literally all it is is just going to be a practice of getting used to using all of the um, ink and the dip pen. Um, and I'm going to use ink straight from the bottle. Um, and I'm going to show you the first one I do and then I'll speed up the rest so you guys can do as I do but then not be bored <laughs> titless of me doing the rest so you just dip it in I'll sh show it on camera dipping it in but I'm only dipping it that far in you don't have to go all the way in. And I like to tap it, I don't know why, I just do. Um, and then all I'm gonna try and do is just draw slowly with even pressure. Just to create some lines. Ooh. This is why I have the tissue paper. That's all right. This is why we're using a sketchbook. So I just want to create some straight lines. Isn't that a good noise? With even pressure. So that's all the first exercise it is and I'm doing it wrong because you're not supposed to do it like that you're supposed to keep the pen at an angle. <laughs> so it's like this. Alright, so moving on to the second exercise, once you feel comfortable enough and you understand the flow of the dip pen, to try and now do a different angle, which is going to be going from the top down. And I've always been told to try and draw moving your shoulder as opposed to moving your wrist. 
um, which I'm a very bad habit at doing, admittedly. <laughs> and also I'll move the paper around usually as well. I'm trying to be the correct way and get into some good habits. So we're going from the top down, which feels much nicer doing it this way. But that is possibly because of the nib. And try and keep even pressure. So I'll speed it up from now on, otherwise you guys are going to be bored titless. Alright, moving on to the third exercise. Let's put some more ink in my bin. It's going directional to create sort of like a square. This way scratches at the paper a little bit more, but that's okay. I mean, I'm just using a C White Brighton sketchbook. They're inexpensive and the paper's really good quality. Um, even for like wa light washes, it's um, on the website, they do say it's a mixed media paper as opposed to a cartridge paper that I originally thought it was. Um, I use it as another, I have another sketchbook the same and it handles watercolours and ink tense pencils um, quite well as long as you obviously don't go too heavy with the water but it does like washes very nicely I'm seeing stripes could be worse, I could be seeing spots and getting Cruella de Vilitis. And then the fourth exercise is going the other way. But remembering to cap tr try and keep the consistency of your line the same throughout. I don't know about you guys, but I actually find this quite therapeutic and relaxing. It's actually helping me to think, actually. I'm thinking of ideas of things while I'm doing this, so... Do you guys find that as well, or do you guys absolutely find that this is torture? Let me know in the comments below. Now the fifth exercise is varying the pressure. So start off with a very thick and then go line thick then down. But let me get this more in the side camera so you can really see what I'm doing. But you might use more ink as well. So thick line, thin line. That's a really thick line. Thin, thick to thin. Thick to thin. Thick <laughs> to thin. Now for the next exercise, the sixth one, we're going to go from thin to thick. Let me get it in shot because I'm very good at forgetting to get it in shot. So thin to thick. Thin to thick. Thin to thick. <gasps> Starting to sound like some sort of yoga teacher. Uh, 
And then the next exercise is going thin to thick, but diagonally. So start at the top, thin, then thick. <laughs> As you can see, I'm struggling with this one. So thin to thick. The aim of the game though with this is not speed, it's um, getting used to how the pen works and how you work with the pen and also understanding the different stroke effects you can get, nine whips and other bits and bobs. Because speed hopefully <laughs> one hopes that um, it will actually come with the more and more that I do this, not just the exercise, I mean just drawing with ink in general. And then the last exercise for this page, you guessed it, is going from fat to thin in the other direction. Remember to put it in the camera so fat to thin and try and keep it straight, <laughs> which I'm clearly not doing. So we can now turn the page and move on to the next few exercises. So the next exercise. He's going from the top down, thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin. And then of course the next exercise is going thin to thick, so thin to thick. Thin to thick, thin to thick. Okay, so then the next exercise, we're gonna go thin, thick, thin. So thin, that's not thin. <laughs> So thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin. And then of course the next exercise is going Thin to thick, but in this direction. Admittedly, admittedly, I am struggling a little bit with this, but that's why we have practice, practice, practice. Alright, the next exercise is going this way thin to thick to thin so thin to thick to thin all right and then the next task Exercise, sorry, is thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick. <laughs> so thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick.
and then the next line is trying to do it diagonally so thick thin thick thick thin thick I'm doing it the wrong way up so thin thick thin thin thick thin thin thick thin thin thick thin not moving my shoulder and of course for the last last uh, uh, for the last exercise on this page we're obviously going to go the other way so fat to thin fat to thin to fat 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 again another bit I struggle with but practice 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 So on the next page, so the next thing I want to show you is with a ruler. Um, you can use dip pen and ink in theory <laughs> with a ruler, um, we're about to find out, but you need a ruler with a lip as I was saying earlier. So as you can see this triangle's got one. This is an old WH Smiths, uh, just the school geometry set. So instead of using it the correct way up, flip it upside down so the lip is along the top. And then get your ink, dab your ink, and then go along the top like that. Resting the side of the nib along the ruler. And you get these perfect straight lines. But ruled lines are uninteresting. There's they're boring, there's nothing really to them. The other tip as well with a ruler, if you do need to do this with a ruler, is just wipe the side down, otherwise you will get ink all over your hands. But ruled, line, ruled lines are uninteresting, they don't have any character, whereas yes, even though I've not done some of these exercises right and I have struggled with some of them, um, there's more character in those lines than there is that. But to me this is mecha mechanical and computerised, almost, um, whereas these are unpredictable and just have more flavor to them you know so the next exercise i want to do is just some wiggly lines basically so instead of going straight is keeping the pressure and creating some little little wiggles but keeping the pressure of the ink dip pen Right. Now the next exercise is to vary the pressure. So try and do it thick and then thin. Thick and then thin. Thick and then thin. So even when you're putting more pressure on the dip pen, you're still able to maneuver the pen around. And then this exercise is going the other way. Start off light and then dark. Light and then dark.
And then just one more exercise I want to do on this page is try and keep a straight line doing a wiggle all the way across varying the different pressures Okay, so the next exercise I want to do is using these squares that literally just one centimeter by five centimeter all the way around. Um, you could do them smaller or larger if you prefer. Um, and it's just to get you to use to starting and stopping at a particular point and trying to keep the line as straightforward as possible. Now the next exercise is trying to line, dash, line, dash, line, dash, line, but in vertical. As architects we use a whole bunch of different type of lines to convey different details or different information so it's always good practice anyway but again trying to hit the sides of the um, box And then on the last exercise for this page, we're then going to go across, dot, across, dot, across, dot. Again, trying to convey a straight dash dot line um, with the varied, uh, with the same pressure. So, the next exercise is to um, do diagonal dash dot. So, dash dot dash dot dash dot. Trying to get a pattern going here. Um, it's not working. So, moving on, because I'm getting bored <laughs> now of doing all of those, but I do feel more comfortable with the pen and I think it's helped. Although I'm not so sure. <laughs> but yeah, 
the next exercise I want to do is basically join the dots. So just join the dots and keep the line as straight as possible. These dots are just a centimeter apart. Nothing special about them. Now the next one is just doing the same thing but for a much longer stroke. Okay, so once you've got comfortable with those exercises, um, you can repeat them as many times as you feel, but I feel the more I do them, the worse I get. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. <clears throat> but um, then when I come back to them a little bit later, I find that I'm a bit, bit better at them. So I think there's a, a, a boundary, a line that I need to find. But yeah, moving on to the next couple of exercises. Just going to do some different line types. So, of course, we know we can do a wavy line and we can go really thick with it and then really thin with it. The other line we can do is something called staggered. basically just a lot of straight sort of angular lines going in all different directions a thunderbug <laughs> cheeky little thing we can do the zigzag which I'm doing it the architectural way <laughs> which is making sure you have a, um, a def clear point but the normal way <laughs> is just this and another line is just like jagged you can use these to create a whole bunch of textures and different outlines for things and just very loose drawings and of course we have a dotted line dash, big dash. And of course we just simply have a solid line. And I've got to admit I find it easier moving my pen to the side and then doing it that way as opposed to trying to do it that way. Even in the results, you can clearly see that I got a straighter line doing it that way than that way, but you do whatever works best for you. Um, the next few exercises I'm going to do is some more curvy lines. 
and circular lines. So for A, we're just going to do like half a oval or an eclipse. This one's actually quite easy, but again, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm having my pen that way as opposed to that way. I mean, let's try it that way. Yeah, I prefer doing it that way. I don't know why. <laughs> now, let's see if we can join them on the next exercise and try and get them to match somehow. way as well. This exercise, I'm going to do a wavy line. You can do this with as much pressure or as little pressure as you want. I may have gone a little bit too much in with the ink there, but never mind. So after those exercises and you've got comfortable with them, we're going to just do some simple uh, 2D objects. Um, but for architecture drawings, we don't just draw, typically we don't just draw a square like this because there's no definite point of where the corners meet. So we typically over exaggerate the lines a little so there's a definite point of where things join that's usually how architects sketch it's only when we get into <clears throat> CAD drawings where they look more like this but we know that the lines definitely meet so on this page we're just going to do a few simple 2D Um, shapes. <laughs> wow, normally I can't draw circles, but that one did. That one was, um, worked out quite well actually. <laughs> Again, I, I like to move my pen round. Either the pen or the paper, I suppose it, it depends on whatever does or doesn't work for me. Let's try, be brave and try another circle, but I suppose if I do it in two halves, you get, yeah, more accurate. Instead of trying to do it in one swoop, but let's try another one swoop. No, nah, not too bad, not too bad, oh, nope. I got drunk on that one. <laughs> Let's try and not be as thin as possible. I'm usually naturally quite heavy handed anyway. So I always find doing finer lines a bit more difficult. So 
So, instead of doing an exercise for the final thing, we're actually going to do a little architecture drawing. Well, not so much architecture, but a skyline of building shapes. And all you've got to use is the basic shapes we've just used and all the exercises to create textures and also for the different line weights and things to create um, depth on these, on this skyline. So I'm just going to use it landscape because it just makes more sense to me to use landscape as opposed to trying to do it in portrait. So the first thing I want is just a straight buoy when I don't run out of ink. Let's see if I can now match it up. Straight line to work with. So we can now start building up our um, skyline using different shapes. Mm. So go straight in ahead. Now the things that are closest to you are usually um, more darker, whereas the things that are further away from you are lighter. Now we've got our foreground shapes. I'm just gonna work on the background shapes. All right, so now I'm gonna start and build up the depth and add a bit of texture and interest to these foreground buildings first. Well, as you can see, we're just building up textures and layers and it's already bringing out an effective sort of illustration. Um, the other thing you could do with just lines is just do some little lines, just straight up and down lines, as light as you can go vary the length of them and it just creates these great little illustrative clouds well I think they do anyway the next thing I want to do is just work on the water a little bit so I just want a really wavy line Well, as you can see, just working with textures and 
building up layers. It brings out depth, even though you're just using the simplest shapes. And you can just go straight from drawing a line to something like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode um, and found it useful and make sure you want to practice just some traditional ink and dip pen. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to cover tone and hatching and start to create things in 3D. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode and you found it useful. So in the meantime, happy architecting. <laughs>